thanks to the organizer uh, for inviting me to tell our stories. And uh, previous speakers uh, made my life easier. And I'm under constant threat from Thangaraj to speak quickly and finish that within 10, 15 minutes. I will try to do that. Uh, see that when we are starting, we are starting with those complex disease genetics because even in the monogenetic diseases, if we see hemophilia, there also we are finding it's not 100% penetrant. So when we are asking about those uh, complex disease, then uh, we are in a terrible shape because mainly all of those genes, uh, they are interacting with the environment and our understanding of the environment is very poor. Uh, before starting that also I want to try to say one quote that these uh, science, what we are doing is like a prickish tyrant, create antibiotics with one hand and health disparities with the other. More and more of these, specifically in India, these genetic medicine, genetic things that where population, a huge chunk of population, they don't even get the paracetamol. So more and more these things, finer and finer segment will be like those Godiva toffees. These street boys will never understand what is inside that. So that is that one side we'll have to understand. So before going that, I will skip definitely some of those slides because it's already my friend Giriraj and other people showed that just to show that whatever I am working with is very important, that disease. And diabetes people, they have the money in the pocket, so it's a little bit pharma driven also. So when we are doing this complex disease, we are looking for many sides, different susceptible variants, complex gene-gene interactions. Uh, my, your, now we are talking about the epigenetic variations, which is very quick because there was a studies in Denmark a uh, couple of years back, they showed by giving the cycling experimentation to left foot and right foot was stagnant. After six months, taking the skeletal muscle a little bit before and after, showing that 600 spots of methylation patterns are altered within these three months or six months. So it's very fast. Uh, and also gene environmental interaction. So when we started, we started first collecting samples, lots of Indian samples, specifically we are from Delhi. So Delhi is that we, uh, in a broad sense, there are four major population in India, linguistically, Indo-European, Dravidian, Tibeto-Burman, and Austro-Asiatic. Since I am from uh, Delhi, and patients are coming from mainly all in Ministry of Medical Sciences, so majority of our population falls into Indo-European linguistic uh, group. So we collected lots of samples. So in the process we see that we can do many things. So initially I will show some of the current GWASs uh, just to answer one question that uh, whether we are different or not. Actually whatever GWAS we will show, these are all of those things measured and all of those GWAS one by one we are publishing including your chronic pancreatitis GWAS and childhood obesity GWAS. So I will show that genomoid association of C-peptide, C-reactive protein, uh, uric acid, your metabolic syndrome, this is blood lipids. Major 80% of those genes are same all over the world because biology is same. It's not like that in Africa that uh, glycolysis pathway will be different than India. So whatever we are finding that is replicable. But there is environmental interaction, I told that environment we understand little. Say for we are predominantly starch eating people and there are wheat eating people. So if I look for the BMI GWAS or obesity GWAS, obviously we will find something with the handle of that starch eating thing which will not show up in wheat eating people. But that is 10%, may are 10 to 15% and that's why one or two uh, novel gene we will get. And these are all associations. So when doing that, we first started from here that Indian type 2 diabetes GWAS. So we use this 610 quad and in the starting phase, discovery phase, we use 2500 samples, whatever 10 to the power minus 3 significant level, we customize another chip and tested that in around 10,000 people of two different ethnicity. And these are those cases and controls, exclusion criteria, and all of them are beautifully characterized anthropometrically and biochemically. 
not only these, all of those cytokines we can name IL-1, IL-1, IL-2, IL-2 beta, TNF-alpha, registin, uh, everything measured. So QTL of all of those will one by one will come. And this is that methodology how we uh, um, uh, proceed there. And then we uh, found that, that highest uh, those signals is TCF7L2 in our population also. Most of them are replicative things, but only one in chromosome 2 we are getting one thing TMA 163 that is new. That is chromosome 2 never being implicated in any population of type uh, 2 diabetes anywhere in the world. And then this is that when we are doing the numbers, we find that GUA significance level 1 is the 10 to the power minus 9, though these three are also novel, but they are in the sub GUA significance. Then we did a, uh, these are those detailed plot of those fine mapping area and we found that there is a, uh, actually uh, this is that uh, your our uh, SNP and we showed we did a imputation and then physically showed that imputed variation is showing 10 to the power minus 12. So this is stronger that means uh, much lower p value. Now let's see what is that and we published this is in 2013 forget that. Now let's see what is that. That is the power of new technology or high throughput studies because it's unbiased and it will come something hypothesis free. If it is insulin related or something, then it's easier for us to pick up. But what it is doing, first thing is like that when we do, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, when we did the fine mapping, we, we saw that most of these four or five SNPs are near to this TMM 163 and in the cluster these all five genes are somehow or other already implicated in different neurological uh, diseases. And what is this? There were two papers already there in the Journal of Neurochemistry which showed that these biochemists are a wonderful bunch of scientists. Whatever protein is there, they do that in, in, in their uh, test tubes and that benefit we are getting as a geneticist or functional geneticist whatever I said that because we have something to start with. They showed that is the synaptosomal membrane protein but we got that it is associated with type 2 diabetes and also surrogately associated with fasting plasma insulin and HOMA IR. And this is that structure cartoon structure that six transmembrane domain and both the C-terminal and N-terminal in the cytoplasmic. It also tells most of those transporters, they are having their both the tail, both the end are in the cytoplasmic site. And this is that um, uh, structure and there is a cation efflux domain. We search a little bit, we find there is another paper that shows that in mouse this SV31, actually this is the counterpart of the TMA163, it actually binds to cation specifically zinc. And it is show that if you these, uh, modify this TMM163, then particularly it is perturbing zinc. Up to this was known when we started. So our hypothesis started building up that perturbation of the TMM163 expression might lead to the fluctuations of intracellular zinc level. Let's see. And this is that where the insulin comes from. This is the insulin structure all of we know and they go inside the secretory vesicle. Inside the secretory vesicle, those two endoproteases cut the C-peptide. End of the day, and insulin hexam are bound by two zinc cations and stay here. Only during that signal that releases the functional insulin. And it is well established. So, in the other side, epidemiologically, it is being shown that zinc deficiency is associated with type 2 diabetes in many population. So she built up a hypothesis that if we disrupt TMA163, there will be fluctuation in the zinc level intracellularly, there will be perturbations in stability of the insulin molecule and there will be alteration in the blood glucose level. This is our starting point. So these are the three objectives in mind. First, from SNP we will have to jump to the mutations because SNP in cases 15% uh, and in controls 35%. And mutation, it will be all and non phenomenon. So first is the fine mapping, second is the tissue expression profiling, and third is the context of the disease, what is the biology of this TMM 163. We found there is a haplogroup here. These are all of those risk alleles, and these are all of, all of those non-risk alleles. And 
based on this, she choose 25, 25 cases and controls. These are homozygous. And then we sequence that area, that 2 megabase area, 100x coverage uh, uh, by new generation sequencing. And what we got? We got uh, this I will just uh, flip because these are the showing that case and controls are difference in all of those uh, type 2 diabetes parameters. So we got three mutations. One is a indel polymorphism, one is a non-synonymous variety, one is a synonymous variety. And none of them, even in the heterozygous form, in the control population. So these are true mutations. And this is the index SNPs, and these three are those three mutations in the exons. And this non-synonymous variation is isoleucine to leucine. We did some uh, bioinformatics study, it shows that there is a, there is a possibly a messenger RNA uh, variability. So we made both the construct and check in the assays. This is uh, simple like that. And before that we told that these are the six transmembrane domain and here is the position of the mutation. And we have a cation efflux domain and it's pretty conservative throughout the higher vertebrates. Before choosing the cell, we choose that where it expresses. So GTX portal shows is omnipresence more or less but pancreas has a high expression level. And when we did in our own hand the tissue panel experimentation, we find though there are a little bit in that uh, cerebellum or in the brain, but maximum in the pancreas. So it, uh, this is the pancreas for your information, the histological slide and the eyelids of Langerhans. And we tested in the human pancreas histological uh, uh, slide that where the insulin and TMEM163 overlaps. And we showed that TMEM163 all over the exocrine and endocrine pancreas. But when we quantify, we showed that exocrine pancreas has less amount of TMEM163, most of them in the eyelids. So then we choose mean 6 cell line, that is the mouse insulinima cell line. And did all of those experimentation again. Showed the co-localization and we took one positive because Flanix group showed there is a ZN8, uh, ZNT8, another bidirectional zinc transporter already established with the type 2 diabetes. But there were some discrepancies, somebody was telling that pump zinc from outside, somebody was telling that pump zinc from inside to the outside. So we took that as a positive control. And both are, uh, them are co-localized here also. Then first thing we did, those mutant and wild type both of them and we showed that whatever we uh, bioinformatically got that is true that messenger RNA level is decreased. So later all of those assay we developed as a loss of function, uh, thinking loss of functional model. We designed two SI RNA, we tested both of them but this one was working better. So next all of those experiment we only show with those uh, number two SI RNA. Then we showed that really after knocking it down that your level of TMEM3163 uh, expression is going down. Then let's see what happening with the zinc level. We showed that the moment it is go down, zinc level is going up. We showed by uh, flow cytometric assay in the protein level because all of those assays we did, that transcription level and translation level, both the assays we showed. Then we showed that what happened in the insulin content. In the mouse, there are two uh, insulin genes. INS1 and INS2 and actually INS2 is the major one in the mouse. Both of them are showing that high but more is that major one and we measured that insulin level in the knockout and it also showed that higher level of insulin by ELISA. Then we showed that stimulated because until and unless there are some stimulation, there are problem in the insulin secretion and we did that with the glucose but only in the glucose, it is not showing that much. But the moment we use the secretagogue and the 25 millimolar uh, uh, glucose, then we immediately see in the knockout insulin secretion. Two things, one inside the insulin vesicle, another is a secretion. Secretion is going down. We showed that by scanning electron microscopy, you can see the number of insulin secretory vesicles are 
going up and up in case of the knockout, which we measured and quantified and showed that insulin secretory vesicle numbers are going up. We showed that by that. Huh. Now, there is a paper it showed that the moment you use some of those insulin secretion inhibitor, then immediately GLUT2 in the surface is increasing. So, GLUT2 is one of the things transporter of the glucose and also it is the signature of the true and normal glycolysis. So, we tested that. Immediately we saw that yes, the surface level of GLUT2 is increasing and in western blot in the protein level also that is increasing. Then we tested that sugar uptake, glucose uptake. In the knockout, uptake is going up, obviously. Then tested the glucokinase, which is the first that uh, point of the glycolysis, and we showed that there is no discrepancies. That means these altered glycolysis or hampered glycolysis, dysfunctional glycolysis, but it's not through glucokinase. Insu but insulin receptor uh, substrate is going down. And also we find that these are other pathway, there is nothing happening, but insulin degrading enzyme is going up because it's sensing, it's a negative food feedback, it sensing the higher level, uh, level of glucose, but it cannot sense whether it is secreted or it's inside the secretory vesicle. And obviously the ZNA, the positive control is also increasing. So now what we showed, that is the hypothesis we are building that the moment this is in the normal state, this ZN8, it pumping zinc inside and our effluxor is pumping from this insulin secretory vesicle zinc outside and then outside the cytoplasm uh, from outside the cell and this is disrupting and what is going on in this TMEM 163 knockout actually that zinc is increasing, insulin is stabilizing there. So it has that two major impact that the circulatory zinc level is going down. So you are seeing that zinc deficiency and type 2 diabetes phenotype and also insulin is not coming. So glucose is uh, going up. So that is the first time we are showing that zinc mediated insulin release and it has that not only one, there is another implications in the complications what, what uh, uh, just uh, we are investigating. So, uh, so then uh, as usual most of those journals started asking knockout mouse uh, which is not a cup of cake for us. Then we find out those homozygous for these mutants from our normal um, uh, human pool. These are knockout human, uh, natural human and we showed that they are fasting plasma insulin level, HB1C level and fasting glucose level everything are different if you have the mutations or not. And uh, just a couple of weeks back, uh, it's published. I think I'm done. So I will take any of those questions. These are the things uh, I, I, I have already discussed because we are running a little uh, short of time. And these are the soldiers who are doing these things. And TMA 160 is by uh, only by Shraddhas. And we are funded because earlier long 15 years the major funding was by CSR Cardiomed and in JNU we have some small funding. So any questions I will be happy to answer.